do an introduction to uh, social media, uh, kind of to, to sort of try and hopefully infuse uh, those of you who aren't already using it, either for personal, for business, or for you know whatever creative activities and events that you're, you're running and being involved in, uh, and try and show you how much value that it can add to what you do. So, to, uh, to start, um, this is me. Um, this is taken from my Twitter profile, um, which is a social media service that I use quite a lot. Uh, it sums me up very well. Uh, I like olives, beer, sunglasses, reading hats, dance music, sticky toffee pudding, Sophie, who's my better half, and being loud. Um, it needs a little bit of an update, if I'm truthful. After the, uh, the, the recent royal wedding, I need to be able to stick cream tea on there as well. Um, big favourite of mine, and I think olives are going to go and drop down the list. Normally, I would be joined by my partner in crime. Some of you may know this man, he's quite infamous in social media circles. Um, a, a lad called Tom Stables, who is uh, my business partner in our company, Three Man Factory. Uh, the reason that we feel qualified, or, you know, I'm saying we, well, he's not even here, it's as if he stood next to me. The reason that we're qualified, we think, to talk to you about this sort of stuff um, is that Tom lectures at UCLan on online reputation management, which is kind of a posh way of just saying uh, what you should and shouldn't do and say online. Um, and I formerly ran a PR company called Duchess of Grange advising uh, private and business clients, again, on how to present themselves in the online world. So what's social media? Um, well, if you look it up on Wikipedia, being properly social, using a, a, you know, another internet tool, social media is content created by people using highly accessible and scalable <coughs> publishing technologies. Well, I think you probably agree, um, it doesn't make much sense. Another definition, probably just as complex, <laughs> is that, you know, it's a, a knowledge, information, traditional media, uh, transformation. The two words that I picked out of that, though, which are key for this, are monologues and dialogues. Um, all social media is about one or the other, and hopefully about both. So, ultimately, um, it's about being human. Although it's online, and although there's a lot of talk about social media being something uh, you know, that, that actually isolates people, when used effectively, uh, it can actually greatly increase the network of people that you deal with, both um, digitally and face-to-face. -face. So a few statistics for you, for you, you stats lovers and, and people out there who like a, a, you know, a, bit, of a, a bit of a number. Um, to show you how important it is, YouTube, over 35 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. And that's gone up recently as well. That was only as, uh, as recent as, I think, December, that, that figure. Um, there are over 2 billion videos watched per month on Facebook, and over two, 20 million have uploaded by Facebook users. Over 5 billion photos hosted by Flickr, and 300,000 photos uploaded a minute to Flickr. Now, uh, those of you who are avid photographers, or have any friends who are, will know that Flickr was the big photo sharing site of the last sort of few years. To put into context of how rapidly things have evolved, Facebook, there are around 3 billion photos uploaded per month. So, you know, that every photo that's on Flickr, pretty much within two months, Facebook has more images on there. Uh, 36 billion uploaded per year. So there's an incredible amount of content sharing going on on the web at the moment. And then, for, for those who've got a, a little bit more dedication, uh, there's, there's well over 150 million blogs. Um, for those of you that don't know, a blog is a, a, a web journal, essentially. So there are, there are 150 pe million people out there writing about what they do, either personally, for business, or for fun, um, and keeping you know, readers regularly updated with their activities. 175 million people using Twitter. Important because Twitter has only been around uh, pretty much for about the last three, four years, and it's certainly only been um, around in, in its current form in the last two. They're sharing um, a lot of information as well. Uh, there's over half a million signing up every day, with over 600 million search queries. So not just about the, what's going up there, but there are people actually searching for information on these channels in absolute huge droves. And if the, 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 the figures sound a little bit staggering and a little bit like, well, how the hell could we possibly crack that nut and uh, get in there? There are tools that are available, all of them free, 
to help you narrow these searches down. Um, so out of that 600 million, you know, if you're using uh, something uh, like an advanced Twitter search, which sounds complex, but all it does is search for information in your local area, you can pin it down to people who are interested, for example, in knitting in Blackpool or within a 15 mile radius, and who are talking about it, it will give you real time updates uh, as to, you know, every time they mention a keyword that you're looking for. Okay, so again, it's, it's, a big, it's a big thing at the moment. Facebook being the, the, the primary one. Um, there's over 500 million users on Facebook worldwide, um, and 70% of them are outside the US. So although it's a US company, the bulk of their operation is elsewhere. We're probably, I think, the second largest uh, uptake of Facebook. Um, and the, the thing with a, a service like this is that people aren't just going on there like you do to Google to check something out. They're going on and spending time. The average Facebook user now um, spends, I think, six to seven hours a month online, which means there are people who bob on for a minute, and then there's the real hardcore weirdos, which I think <laughs> I probably fall into the right category, who are on Facebook every other second and you know who you are there will be people in this room who probably while i'm speaking before i get to the end of this presentation check their phone to see whether there's been any interesting updates either because hey i'm not interesting enough so i'll, I'll be watching see any hands drop or heads drop um, or just because they feel so connected uh, to the people that they're, they're on facebook with that they don't want to miss out on a single thing um, and interestingly in the uk over 50% of people who visit it do it on, on their mobile phone. So if you're running an event or an activity or a workshop or anything like that, um, the chances are that people, if you've got something, some way for them to involve themselves with social media, especially like Facebook, they will do it they, they use it on the hoof. We won't go too deep into LinkedIn because it's a little bit shirt and tie and businessy for this time of evening and for this kind of environment, but it's worth noting that it's there. Um, LinkedIn is a, a more professional network. So if you're wanting to talk to people who are uh, suited, booted and really mean business, you will find them in LinkedIn. It's actually the oldest of all the social networks as well. It's been around for quite some time, but it's only uh, within the last, uh, I suppose, 12 to 18 months that they've really found their feet. Um, and understood what their niche is. And then finally, for just listing over a, a few services, one that probably only myself, I think Duncan and maybe John sat at the back down there. Oh, we've got another, but we'll know about is Foursquare. Um, Foursquare is very, very new. Um, it's kind of cutting edge in social media at the moment. And it's a service where Oh, God forbid, actually what you do is you check in and tell everyone where you are at every second of the day. Um, it connects to the GPS in your mobile phone. Uh, it's the kind of social media service that causes all the scare stories in the papers when um, you know footballers are getting robbed while they're playing football and that sort of stuff. But when it's used effectively, um, it can be a great driver for getting people to involve and collaborate at events. Um, they have a, a system on Foursquare where you win badges for things that you do for exploring your city. One of the badges is called a swarm badge, which is where you gather up 50 people to go to the same place. And, and it's the only way that you can obtain it is by connecting to, to randoms and other people like that. So if your business has cottoned on to this, we, there's a, a dojo in Preston, um, uh, Preston Shooter Camp, and they, they were desperate to try and drive up the numbers for one of their demo days. So they sent a message out on Twitter and, and all the other bits and pieces they're involved with, saying that we'll be, we'll be getting a Foursquare Swarm badge for all of you, you nutters who play Foursquare to come and get involved with. And it worked. You know, they had uh, 50, 60 people turn up just to get the badge. Now, whether any of those signed up or did any uh, Aikido afterwards, I have no idea. I'd, li I'd like to think there was a huge sort of Jackie Chan style brawl with all 50 of the Swarmers competing maybe for uh, another badge. Who cares? <laughs> Good question. Well, Facebook care enough about Foursquare and about location-based stuff, and, and considering they're the biggest you know, in social media at the moment, the fact that they've just launched Facebook Places, which is their own version of it, means that this is probably going to be around for a, a, you know, some time to come. Um, if the big boys are doing it, then you know that they're going to be putting enough money into making it uh, to work and make cash for themselves. 
So, social media, uh, essentially, in whatever form it is that you get involved, whether it's with location or Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, it's a conversation that you, you don't want to be missing out on. And I suppose importantly, um, it goes on with or without you. So <laughs> I'm going to give you some scare stories now. They're good scare stories, but they're worth knowing about. Um, this is a photo from Lufton Sea, um, and you probably can't get the, 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 the tweet that was here. This was sent on Twitter. Someone took a photo of this guy and then tweeted it. This employee was extremely rude to us in Europe last night. Believe it or not, um, a, a truly terrible travel <coughs> experience. Ah, this guy's followers. Somebody else recognised this, this bugger. Um, and also validated it with, oh yeah, he was horrible to me last year at, at, at this exact same time. Awful and heartless, had me in tears. Um, it, it turns out that, you know, the internet, we, we talk to each other, we support each other quite a lot. So if you get caught out, the chances are um, other people have probably, you know, experienced something similar. Now, unfortunately, Lufton C weren't, weren't paying attention. Similar to Marks and Spencer's and their staff. This is a quote by Marks and Spencer's staff about their customers that was caught on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, British Airways staff on their customers. Um, I don't know if any of you, any of you shop for Marks and Spencers or British Airways. You may be reconsidering at the moment. <laughs> I don't know if it was the Blackpool Marxies, by the way. I haven't investigated that enough to find out yet. Um, and then this this is a, a, you know it's not just national brands. It's it's smaller brands, cafes, restaurants, places like that. This is a, a conversation that went on uh, in a pizza parlour in in New York. Um, there was a guy in there, uh, just an amateur blogger, but he wrote a, a food blog with quite a big following, so he was relatively well respected. Um, and he basically said that he hadn't enjoyed his experience in the restaurant. Um, the manager got in touch with him, but instead of handling it in the right way, uh, unfortunately she handled it in the wrong way. Um, <coughs> as it says at the top, you'll see that everyone loves us, the only people that don't is our competition. She thought he was a stooge to begin with. Um, and as for you having the patio all to yourself, because he sat outside, uh, it's summertime in Arizona, moron. The only, only people who sit outside are tramps and losers in 110 uh, temperatures. Do us a favour and keep your ugly face and your ugly opinions to yourself uh, and go back to the <coughs> restaurant that you really work at. Now, unfortunately, that, that caught on. Um, a, a number of the other food blogs got hold of it, and I believe the uh, New York Times even spotted the review. So the damage that was done by handling that badly was immeasurable. British Airways, 13, um, uh, sorry, Virgin Airways, 13, rather nice looking uh, air stewardesses. Unfortunately, not them, actually, as it happens in this case, but this is what they were saying about their customers. Again, uh, airline staff being rude. Um, Virgin were paying attention. All 13 of them lost their jobs. So, now that I've scared you all into not wanting to take part, um, how can people, I've got business up there because normally we do this for, for, for sort of pure uh, uh, business seminars and things like that, but I think the, the essential uh, values are exactly the same regardless of whether you're just using it personally or, or for business or for third sector. Well, firstly, um, it's a fantastic customer service tool. Uh, it, the, the, the golden rule for me has always been that you should be uh, conversing with your customers wherever they converse. So if people are talk, trying to talk to you, like, like uh, I think um, the, the Lufton Seat people were, you know, if they'd had a channel that they could have reported this guy to, they were obviously Twitter users, um, it might not have caught the same um, tempo and speed that it, it, it built up to. Um, Wonga are a great example of this. They're a, are they a shady company? I don't know. They're, they're, they're on our, you know, our local team, aren't they? Well, possibly, maybe not next year, but for the moment they still are. Um, and despite what I, I think about payday loans and maybe what everyone else does, they have exceptionally good customer service online. Um, we spotted um, a conversation going on between Tom and one of his friends. They were talking about the huge APR that Wonga have. Uh, Wonga obviously had the right tools in place, the right staff in place to listen to this, and they dived in and corrected us on it. Um, they, they basically uh, gave us the, the right information about how much their loans cost and um, the, the levels of responsibility they go to to check and things like that. And 
they came out of it very, very well. Well, I'm using them to quote them as an example in front of a room full of people. So effectively championing their flag for customer service, uh, not necessarily for payday loans. <coughs> you may have seen this before when you get an email. Um, unlike with an email from a, from a marketing company saying, you know, would you like to buy our latest line of whatever products it is? You know, we've got um, 15, 16 new things that we want you to, you know, get your hard earned money. Hold on. At the top of that email, usually it says in large writing or it's from an email address that says do not reply. Um, Social media is not like that. Social media is about replying and about connection. So unlike um, building up a wall, by communicating with uh, customers or, or interested parties via social media, uh, you, you want to encourage a conversation. So you can listen to your customers um, on things like wall posts, <laughs> tweets and reviews. But the beauty is, is, as well as just listening, you can ask the question, and respond. It's great for public relations. Um, it took down the barrier within within my job of approaching editors and journalists. You'll find that um, a lot of the people that you want to get hold of, if you look them up on a service like Twitter, because not everybody is using it yet, it makes it much easier to get hold of them. If you try and ring them, the likelihood is you know you could spend a week, a month, a year trying to get hold of someone, and you'll never get through. Um, use the medium that's best. In fact, on that note, I'd like to skip back to uh, customer service. If you want to make a complaint, especially if it's to BT, I complain to BT all of the time um, because they're just a nightmare. I have my broadband through them and it's constantly going wrong. Um, but every time I tweet them, because it's in, it's in the public arena, uh, unlike a phone call where they can leave you hanging for you know, 40 minutes until you're bored and you hang up, and Sky are the same. So it's just, this is a side, a side but it's a good tip nonetheless. Um, if you get in contact with them on something like Twitter or their Facebook page or something like that, where the rest of the world can see it, it's unbelievable how much quicker they get back to you <laughs> and, and how, you know, how sort of pleased they are to deal with you and try and solve whatever problem or issue it is that you have. Um, but the public relations one, yeah, it's, it's about getting past uh, the gatekeeper, essentially. Um, pretty much every um, <coughs> journalist at the Gazette is on Twitter. So even just for local papers, it's a fantastic way of building rapport with them as well before you were you know, thinking about maybe sending a story in. Um, the key though is, is talk and don't shout, which is what I meant by rapport. People, um, it, it, social media is more like a conversation. Um, if, the, you know, if the web was a city, I suppose, then eBay would be, uh, you know, well, eBay would be an awful garage sale these days, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, and, you know, we, we've got sort of the classifieds and things like that. And, um, social media is a cocktail party or a gathering like this. It's a chance to talk to people face to face and with a little bit of humanism in you. So um, it's okay to approach these people, but just go in, go in gently and without the hard sell. It builds loyalty incredibly well, um, especially if you, you've, you know, it gives you a chance to sort of talk to people before they even want to get involved with your organisation or with your product or your service or your activity. Um, a cracking example of this is a company called Christopher Ward Watches, and they make um, fine watches that have a really loyal following. And every year they they launch uh, a limited edition watch. One year on their forums, where the you know the sort of the watch nerds go to talk about watches, I have to, to say it's mainly men on the Christopher Ward Watch forums. You don't tend to get a lot of girls. There are a lot of nerdy girls out there as well, though. But they're just on different forums talking about different things. Um, but on these particular forums, it's nerdy guys talking about watches. And one guy must have been especially nerdy, calling himself the Terminator. Um, you always find people on forums give themselves a name that either, I don't know, imagine in a different life that they might have been or become. Um, and he was uh, not complaining, but just offering his opinion on what he thought the, uh, the, the, the limited edition watch should have been that year. Christopher Ward, knowing how dedicated their, their you know, sort of super watch fans are, um, asked him about it. Said, you know, okay, well, what is it that you would have changed? He's like, oh, the numerals, maybe a stainless steel strap. Um, possibly a black face with white, uh, you know, sort of figures on it. Uh, they made it. They made a hundred of them. Um, Terminator, I think, 
bought about 40 or 50 <laughs> straight off the bat because they, they called it the Terminator limited edition watch. Canny piece of marketing that, you know, you've got one guy who's obviously an obsessive, so they just made him a watch, pretty much knowing that he'd go and buy them all. The other 50, he was happy to plug pretty much to everyone that he knew, everybody on the internet. And it's effectively turned him into, you know, a, an advocate, super fan salesperson without paying him any money. In fact, he's paid them money, hasn't he? It's a genius piece of, genius piece of marketing. Um, but he's still come out of the other side feeling good about it, despite the fact that he spent a lot of money. If you go onto the Christopher Ward forums and type in Terminator and look at um, what he's talked about on there, uh, he was just absolutely bowled over that they'd taken the time to even read his posts, let alone offer to, to make the watch. They probably wouldn't have had to do that to, to still keep him happy. They probably would have just had to ask him what he wanted. As it was, they completely converted him into a total zealot. Um, great stuff. Interestingly, 90% of consumers online trust recommendations from people they know. Um, and 70% trust opinions of unknown users. Now this goes against everything that normal human beings do, because if you were in the pub, and I use a lot of pub analogies, um, you, you, know, you might be thinking, I could do with a new car. I'll ask a friend, you know, maybe his friend if we sat together. You probably wouldn't walk up and down the bar asking everybody you know, their opinions for, for where you should spend your hard-earned cash. But I can guarantee that any of you shop online We'll probably have looked at the star ratings, reviews and recommendations left by complete and utter total strangers who might have appalling taste or be just, you know, completely crackers. And yet we still um, build an element of trust from that. And that's quite a powerful thing because it means if you've um, held an event or anything like that, get people to, to review it and recommend it pretty much every service that's available like facebook and things like that they all have a way for you to to leave commentary and um, encourage people to do it because it, the power of that is quite incredible the herd mentality is it's um, it's very interesting i mean essentially it's just word of mouth but it's word of mouth with <coughs> 500 billion other people, you know, um, all at the same time, all over the world, or in your own locale at whatever time of day you want. Uh, it's good for spying, definitely. Um, if you want to find out how to put something on or how to do something, or if you're thinking, right, I've got a really good idea, I don't know how to do it, just look at who else has done it and then nick all of their ideas. Because essentially the likelihood is they put a lot of it up online. And as long as you, uh, you know, use that to better, better things, the world and the place around you, and you're not just carbon copying, taking what's up there, it's important to remember that what goes up is in the public domain. So do bear that in mind yourselves. Anything that you wouldn't want to share with everybody shouldn't be uploaded. It's good for networking. Um, if you're a saddo like me and spend like pretty much from half eight in the morning till I don't know, nine o'clock at night at work, apart from an occasion like this where I see this as a social outing, believe it or not. <laughs> um, uh, I only get to do my real networking online in front of the TV at night. But the beauty of that is that I can do it for five minutes or half an hour, I can do it in my pyjamas if I want, or naked. However, you know, it doesn't matter what the fancy takes me, because nobody else can see it on the other side. So I can be incredibly professional and be covered in, you know, Doritos crumbs and salsa and all sorts like that. And it, it doesn't <laughs> harm sort of public opinion of me. Apart from the fact, obviously, I've just told a room full of people who, who are all based in the local area, except for what I do. Well, I probably won't be networking with you guys online, otherwise you'll know what I'm up to. <laughs> um, it's good for, for showing leadership and, and by that, I suppose what I mean is that there's a, a large portion of the online community who um, are there just to help each other. Um, if you have a problem, uh, and that sounds like the beginning of the 18, doesn't it? <laughs> and no one else can call. Maybe you can put a message out on Twitter and the two or three experts will give you an answer back. Um, you'll find very often that if, you, you know, if you're struggling, like I struggle with design programs quite a lot. Um, I follow a lot of designers online, I'm connected to a lot on things like LinkedIn. Um, it, they're unbelievably willing to give you free information, as long as obviously you're not asking for hours and hours of work. Um, if it's something like, you know, I'm struggling to know um, a good insurance company for putting on a live event, can anyone recommend it? The chances are that people will, will help you out because the web is quite reciprocal like that. But it does mean that if someone asks you something that you, you need to be able to offer them something back. Um, Customer acquisition, 
or it could be you know, network acquisition. It, it's just the building of the, the people who are important to whatever it is that you're doing. This happens naturally if you follow all of those steps. That sounds dead simple, doesn't it? Follow all these steps of having good customer service, PR, um, making sure you know what the competition's up to and all that sort of stuff. But the, the, the basic um, principle with it is that as soon as you start getting involved in social media, as long as you put a time limit on it and you don't spend all day sat there, which is very easy to do, you need to have an objective. This will happen as a natural result. It, it just does. I've been sort of involved with, with social media and with businesses for about about probably four years now and sort of two years with it running quite rapidly and this inevitably always happens even if you're, you're not sort of focusing on it to begin with um, but the key points are try not to sell apart from yourself that's okay to do that you know it, you know it is about your personality so that that should come through people like buying from people and people like being talked to by by real people but essentially you just need to, to listen, and the only way you can do that is by signing on to these, these services. Um, you need to engage with people if they're there, and you need to measure how successful that's been. Now there is probably about another three or four hours of this presentation. Um, I can whiz through those now, if you like. <laughs> so, no. Excellent. Um, normally what we do, is we would go through each service. Now, obviously, there isn't time to do that here tonight. And also, I you know, normally charge a horrendous amount of money for that. But if you'd like me to glance over a couple of the key points for setting up your Facebook, your Twitter, and your LinkedIn, I, I need a show of nods. I will do. And I'll just give you some important tips. If you would rather um, get online, get on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and find myself, um, you're welcome to ask me these all in your, your own time and I'll probably give you all this information for, for nothing anyway because that's kind of what this is about. Um, so.